Joints in the human body. The meeting point of two or more bones is called a joint. We have over 300 joints in the human body. I'd like you to pause for a moment and try to identify a few joints on the skeleton here. Well, I'm sure you found quite a few joints. We'll discuss a few of them. At the elbow, we have three bones meeting and that is a joint. At the shoulder, we have bones meeting that also qualifies as a joint. Even at the jaw, there are bones meeting that qualifies as a joint too. At the vertebrae, if you look at the backbone, bones are meeting each other there. So that's also a joint. There are lots more. You can pause and try to identify a few more if you like. Now the joints of the human body are divided into two types, the immovable joints and the movable joints. An example of an immovable joint is the joint at the bones of the skull. These bones are not allowed to slide over each other or they're not allowed to move over each other. They act like a weld and because of that there's no movement and that's why they're called immovable joints. On the other hand, we have movable joints. For example, at our elbows, at our knees, at our fingers, we have lots of different joints where there's room for movement. And in this video, we'll be discussing movable joints in more detail. Now, there are lots of types of movable joints. We'll discuss three of them in this video. The hinge joint, the ball and socket joint, and the gliding joint. Let's start with the hinge joint. I'm sure you've seen hinges at doors and windows. Hinges are pretty interesting. They allow movement along this direction, right? They allow rotation along that direction. Let's try to see uh, an animation of a hinge in action. So you can see that this is allowed to move in this direction and is allowed to move back in that direction. So there's a rotation in a particular direction. We have bones in the body which are joined in a similar fashion. Let's look at one example. At the elbow, we have such an example. Let's, let's see this in action. Look at this arm. At this point, there's a hinge joint. This allows movement in this direction and back in this direction, right? Just like the animation. So that was an example of a hinge joint. Now let's go to the ball and socket joint. The ball and socket joint has two components, the ball and the socket. The ball can snugly fit into the bowl shaped socket like this. And once it fits in, you can see that it can move in the you know, left, right direction, we can call it, or it can move in this direction, right? Which is the back and the front direction, if you want to call it. And now you can see it also can rotate around. Basically, it's just free to move within the socket. Can you think of any of the joints on your body that act like this? Well, you may have gotten it right. The joint at the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Can you spot the ball here? Right? Yes, that's the ball and the socket is there. Another example is the hip joint. This also has a ball and socket feature. The ball is here and it sits inside the socket. Let's see this in action. So there's left and right movement at the hip, right? The hip is the point of movement, okay? And uh, there's also front and back movement, right? front and back movement. Nice. Now we'll come back to a demonstration with both of those movements together, a rotation kind of movement. Okay, so that was the ball and socket joint in action. Now let's discuss the next kind of joint called the gliding joint. The gliding joint is also called a planar joint and that's because these uh, two surfaces like this say is bone one and this say is bone two, both these surfaces have a plain smooth surface. Okay, you can see how that works. They share a surface and they can move front and back right in this direction but they can also move in this direction so that's both left right and front back and a combination of both but wait a minute how is it different from the ball and socket joint notice that these surfaces are planar so there's no rotation involved there's only gliding involved and that's why it's called a gliding joint okay uh, that's how the gliding joint works. Where do you find it on the body? The best example of a pure gliding joint is the vertebrae. 
all these string of bones on the back are separated by joints like here you can see it here and these are the best example for flat planar gliding joints that's it for this video let's just do a quick recap so this was our hinge joint an example of where the hinge joint is found is the elbow this was the ball and socket joint an example of the ball and socket joint was the hip and the shoulder and we've had planar or gliding joints and the best example that we can find of that is the vertebrae.